Well, hey everyone, thanks for joining another Ridiculously Amazing Agent podcast. Today we're going to dive into the secret life of account managers or your frontline team. Now, this podcast is definitely a difficult one for me because I feel like in a lot of ways we're doing very rogue stereotyping. Um, but I also find it super important that we identify some commonalities and put each other in each other's shoes. Um, so for those of you following us on social media, we are back out on the road and couldn't be happier to be out there and seeing people again. But in addition, we've added some new ways to work with us. If you haven't seen already, we have an online school which has our retention, time management, and sales training program in it. We are also going to commit to adding a new training in every quarter and kind of doing a monthly pop-up um, at some point in the near future. So if you're interested, go ahead and check it out on our website under products, and you can see how your team can benefit from more in-depth training. It's got role-playing scripts, it's got workbooks, it's got um, actual like role-playing videos of how to sell certain products or how to keep customers. And so we couldn't be more excited to bring this more online, on-demand version of what we do. And I got to say, we've got some great results and some great feedback so far, so hopefully we can welcome you as well. But we're launching a whole new vir uh, virtual line of pro programs, too. So you can take all of our programs or normally be flying out to see you and do them all from behind the glowing box. As we've learned through the coronavirus, there's different ways of doing business, and this might be more advantageous to everybody. But without further ado, let's talk about the secret life of account managers. Now, again, this is a difficult podcast for me because I don't think everybody's going to fit into these nice little neat buckets, but in my experience working with so many agencies, there's just some, just some straight commonalities that we can all talk about. Now, some of these I think make us phenomenal at being a frontline team member, and some of them I think hold us back, and that's why I really wanted to do this podcast is to explore that topic and maybe get a little controversial but push people out of their comfort zone in a way that means that we can all expand and hit our potential. I was at dinner with my husband last night, and I have been struggling with this concept of what's your why. Um, I think it's a lot easier when you have kids, your why is your children. Um, obviously, I love my husband. I love the life that we have. I love the lifestyle that we have. Um, but that didn't seem like enough of a why for me. Um, pursuing all of that is a little bit of, you know, a challenge some days. But my actual why that I came up with would be that I never hit my full potential. I think if I look back as an older woman or on my deathbed someday, hopefully not anytime soon, and was like, well, what does my life look like? If I didn't hit my potential, that would be my biggest regret. Um, and you can call that crazy, um, but I just feel like I have a big potential to give to the world. And however that looks, and I'm sure it will change in different phases of my life, that's what I want to do. And so as we look at the secret life of account managers, um, let's kind of talk a little bit about some, some broad brush strokes here. So uh, I have met some phenomenal male account managers. By far, most of us are females. Um, you know, it's the bulk of this, this type of work. And in fact, for many years I fought and still sometimes it slips out of my mouth and I hate it is when people call them, oh, the, give it to the girls, they'll take care of it. Um, for those of us out there using those terms and trust me, I'm not some big feminist or, you know, somebody who is easily offended in any way, way shape or form, but it's just probably not the best term. It's kind of demeaning a little bit. And really these are account managers managing multi-million dollar premium books and they have a pretty difficult job. So let's start with inside the office and we'll go outside the office to talk about what people's lives look like. So inside the office, actually I'm gonna reverse that. I'm gonna talk about outside the office first because we start our lives outside and we come into the office. So for many, many account managers, they are family members. They are the matriarch of the family. They have kids, um, you know, and they're coming to work and every day to benefit their family. That's really their why more than anything is they want to see their family succeed and they want to provide for their family. And this is a great way to do it. You know, working in an agency provides you a phenomenal work-life balance. You know, you get to kind of check in, check out, the agency closes. Every now and again, there might be a time where you have to stay a little late, but it's by no means the rat race of corporate America of trying to find your way to the top. It's um, very structured, very routine, and that's, that's kind of what the jam is. So a lot of them get up, you know, get the coffee going, 
make the kids lunches, make breakfast, run around, throw the laundry in, empty the dishwasher, scooch off to work, listening to the news and get to the office right around the time it opens. Um, some people do come in early because it's a you know quiet time and they get a lot done, but for most people, they're kind of sneaking on in right as the agency opens. And they get there and all morning long, they have served other people, right? They've served their husband coffee or they've served their kids breakfast. They've served them lunch. They've got all the organizational to-do list items to make sure everything's functioning. And then they come into work, into that same role, but serving customers, serving management, serving all these different people. Now, what makes a great account manager is they are personable, they are friendly, they are helpful, they are problem solvers. And this can also create that friction of selling to the customer base, right? Kind of that people pleasing, I wanna solve the person's problem. They didn't tell me the problem was they didn't have enough liability coverage. They told me the problem was they needed a certificate or they told me the problem was they need to make a payment. And really the reality of the situation is at that point in time is like we're asking them, so from the time they woke up, they've been a servant leader, right? They've been leading their, their family by serving them. They come to the office, they wanna serve the customer. And now we have to identify that we want them to sell insurance. Um, now, whether this is through renewal review calls or cross-selling, or even they take a flux of inbound business and, um, and just customer service work. So no matter who you are as a person, you lean on your dominant traits, right? So if you're not by nature someone who loves selling things, you're going to service, 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 service. And if you stumble across it, you'll do it and it won't be a bad thing, but you're not organically going to see a very clear path to doing this. So it's gonna be fuzzy. Um, and so as we keep injecting these conversations into agencies about education and what is serving the customer, we can start building those little pathways to identifying that serving the customer is really protecting them, making sure that they have all the information that they need to make those decisions. So the first rub in that conversion to sales is, I wanna solve people's problems. They come to me to solve problems. I'm a problem solver, I take care of that. And I take care of them in doing it and they are satisfied and happy with the fact they did their certificate, I handled their audit. I made their payment, I changed their vehicle, I did these items. Now, if we go into the service side just a little bit, in addition, one of the funny things about being a frontline service person is counting the number of logins you have. You've got logins to readers and management systems and companies and finance companies and you know all these different things. And so, you know, what seems like a very simple thing, like changing a vehicle, often can have 15, 16 steps to do it perfection. And these could be different steps and things and this and that and sign documents. And so a lot of times we work with agencies to say, well, what's a good streamlined process, right? If we're recording phone calls, do we need to say, hey, get this person to sign this document? You know, could we attach that phone call? How can we make it simple and easy? And good on the customer too, because if we put too much on them, it's hard. So a lot of times, because again, many people are people pleasing, that's by nature. They want to solve the problem of doing this job right for the customer, doing it right for the agency. And then the phone rings and we're halfway through this, and we're going here. And really by about lunchtime, people are exhausted. <laughs> we're exhausted from serving people. Our brains are taxed with 15 step checklists and things like that. And knowing somewhere along the way that there's a stack of activities I just can't get to and there's my laundry list and the groceries and the kid is texting. And literally you can start to see it like by 11 o'clock, like people get stretched thin. And this is a sign, not just of in an agency, but I am all, I'm a huge believer. Like I don't think the word work-life balance works. I think it's completely one of those things that makes me feel inferior every single day. And I don't like that, but it's not work-life balance. That it's, we have are living in a society where your kids text you at work and sometimes you sneak in writing a grocery list. And by the way, at home at the grocery store, you might run into a client. Like there's a blend here and that's okay. It, you know, you have to keep everything in check, but that's okay. So by lunchtime now, we've taken all these tasks. We have a pile sitting. Our kids, you know, have texted us 15 times because they can't put batteries in the remote. 
And literally this exhaustion sets in of, gosh, I'm pulled in so many different directions. I can't breathe. I'm doing the best I can. And we sort of live in this idea at this point, I'm never going to get caught up. But I always challenge us with a countdown. I'm like, well, are you caught up at home? No. Well, maybe our expectations need to be different and we need to be in that moment more and really focusing in on that client. So as we introduce the idea of selling to account managers, it's this task that they put in their day. Like, it's not just, I have this person on the phone, let me just ask where your auto is. It's okay, it's another boulder, it's another mountain to climb where for salespeople, it's just part of the beautiful ballet of talking to people. I talk to people and I educate them and that's what we do. Um, it's kind of like with a salesperson who sits down and they do an app set, they're like, okay, uh, this is gonna take me a bajillion hours. It's the same thing, it's just the reverse um, scenario. So think of it this way, it's like, we have to have ways that we can be quick and intentional and make it an intention every day. So it's not that account managers aren't great salespeople. In fact, I challenge this, I, I love this. If you ever call up your account manager and say, I'm gonna reduce my coverage, they go into mama bear beast mode, um, I'm not doing that and here's why. And they will read you that mom riot act and you will go back to your room and think, okay, I'm not reducing my coverage. <laughs> if you can unlock that on the sales side, they could be your most powerful sales team. But it's that idea that there's more work, there's more risk, what if the house, they kind of put their underwriting brain on. And so we have to sort of over time kind of smooth out those edges. It's totally possible, it's, it's just that. So one of the things you'll see with account managers a lot of times is they look burned out. They don't look enthusiastic all the time. And guys, if this is you, I'm gonna encourage you to change your brain, change your mindset on this, because I think you should. Like, it's, a, it's the reality of, as I talk about burnout and I yawn, good job. Um, it's the reality of how can we empower things to be in the right spots? You know, in so many agencies, there's now remote employees and virtual assistants or customer service work. But we don't want to give it up because there's this perfection model of everything's got to look perfect. I'm going to do this. And if I give it to somebody else, they might screw it up. Let it go. Let it go. You know, if somebody came in and said, listen, you get to have a house cleaner. Somebody's gonna come clean your house every week. You know, are you excited or are you like, they're not gonna clean it the way I do? Because <laughs> let me tell you something. I don't care if they clean it the way I do. I don't have to clean the house. It's the same in an office. So you gotta let go of some of the things. Um, but the biggest things are on the account manager side is they are great people. They're very loyal. They love their customers. They love what they do. And the world's changing and no one loves change less than an account manager because it'd be really great to get that lather, rinse, repeat because the more I can do a repetitive task that I feel comfortable with, the faster I can go and the more people I can help and the less relieved I will find. But let me tell you something, the faster you go, it just means you take another phone call that day. It doesn't exactly work out that way. And then they leave and there's a pile of work waiting for them that stresses them out and they go home and they keep serving, right? They serve people dinner, they help kids with homework, they clean the house, they do those grocery shopping, they're doing all the things that can sometimes we don't realize, but those 10 minute tasks take up time. Rinse read a whole book on time management and the biggest takeaway was, it was actually brilliant. It was, you don't schedule a time to empty the dishwasher, but you have to do it. If you really scheduled out all the time, things you have to do, you realize why when you hit the head, your pillow at nine, 10 o'clock at night, you're exhausted because literally you stretch time past its capacity. And you know, you've got to think about how do I delegate some of these things at home? I'll tell you one of the things that's <laughs> helped me and my husband out a ton, my husband's 100% Italian if he married the exact opposite of the woman sitting at home cleaning and cooking, we started doing HelloFresh meals. Now some people, if you've got kids, I get it, it might not be the most economical, but for us, there's no leftovers, so I can lose weight easier. <laughs> he can cook because there's literally pictures, which is great. And then on top of it all, the food's great, and I don't think about grocery shopping, it just comes. And so we keep trying to find ways to enjoy life a little bit more. So as you look at, you know, the dynamics of these account managers, understand that you want to constantly reinforce a good job. Um, their lives, for the most part, again, very stereotypical. This is why this podcast has been hard for me to come to terms with actually doing. 
but in a lot of ways, it's not like their kids come home and say, thanks mom so much for going to work today so I could go to soccer camp. You know, husbands don't always come home and say, thanks hun for folding the laundry, that was awesome. You know, so they live in a world where the expectation is that they're always in the servant, servant role. And they want to make everybody happy and they want to make you happy by cross-selling or by retaining a customer. Um, but all too often, like, you know, we, they approach it maybe in a different way and that's what gets them a bit in trouble. So while you might've approached it, like, why would we reshop this person? They look at it like, well, they were really upset about the price and their price did go up a lot. And if that happened in my family, I'd be upset. And those keywords are the kiss of death. If that happened to me, I'd be upset. We are all not the same people number one. And number two, we have to get stronger developing those muscles on defending against price. And I can tell you far by far, for those of you listening to the event through our FX retention program, you know this, being proactive reduces so much price sensitivity. And we start being valuable again. And one of the coolest things that happens in the renewal call program is that the customer service team, those account managers, your frontline team starts hearing the words, thank you from the customer. And they blossom because of it. Those simple words of gratitude and appreciation can go so far. But the typical account manager is not somebody who wants to be the center of attention. So they don't walk into your office and be like, totally just stole an umbrella. Yep, I did. Uh-huh. You know it. That's me. Stole the umbrella. Now your producer comes in and says, totally had a great coffee meeting with somebody who's going to refer me to their second cousin who owns a manufacturing company. I still got this. Like they have coming and telling you that they sold something when they don't even have like a copy of the deck page. So <laughs> you gotta realize like they're so extremes. And so you have to do your job as a leader to find those moments of greatness and water them because when they get watered, they grow. And when they grow, people blossom into something more than they could, which goes back to my original comment of, I would be so sad if I never hit my potential. I'm taking that one step further. I wanna help every frontline person hit their potential. And I know that I can help do that by installing tracking and coaching and training and honestly just helping people see it's possible. So that is my rant and rave on the frontline team and the secret life of account managers. If you're listening to this, I just want to give you three takeaways. If you're that frontline person, I'm going to really encourage you to keep an open mind on the cross-selling, on the retention side of things. Don't look at it as another thing in your day. Look at it like I could easily interweave it with what I'm already doing to get a good result. On the personal side, because I feel like we do this here because there's work-life balance, I'm gonna encourage you to set up and delegate some things to the fam. Um, I know it's helped me a ton. Uh, and a lot of times like I would come home frustrated like, I just got home at 7.30. Why isn't he already making dinner? It's now 7.30. It's another thing I have to do. I realize you got to communicate too. And so for me in my personal life, we've had a lot of conversations about who can do what, when, and we really approach it on a day-by-day -day basis. Um, Brene Brown did this best saying, you know, it's not a 50-50 split. Sometimes you got to call your significant other or your kids and be like, hey, I'm at a 20% right now. I need some help with you guys stepping up. So it is totally okay to have chicken nuggets for dinner. Yoda, baby Yoda would love that. It's totally okay to order out pizza. It's totally okay to teach your kids how to clean a bathroom. It's totally fine. I was cleaning bathrooms at 10. Uh, you know, my mother ran a very tight ship. I knew I had to make dinner by 12. In fact, every night she came home to dinner cooked by me. I knew how to iron. Kids are very resilient and you're teaching them awesome stuff. They might not like it in the beginning, but shoot, who does? <laughs> They'll get used to it. If you're a leader listening to this and you're figuring out how to, how to motivate account managers, gratitude, appreciation, and recognition are your keys to success. And this means you have to be intentional and find them because they are not going to bring them to your attention. They're not going to be like, hey, look at me. Look what I did say. Totally saved a $5,000 account. Woo! They're not, they're not going to do that. You have to be intentional of lock, interlocking with the team and finding those things and just 
really taking a moment and showing gratitude. This could be, here's your favorite bottle of wine on Friday night. Have a great weekend. This could be, hey, I heard your kids got soccer practice. Why don't you leave a bit early? I got your desk. This could be a, a grandeur of things. But the one thing I didn't say that I probably should say is most account managers run around feeling guilty all day. Guilty they're not spending time with their kids. Guilty they're not hitting this at work. Guilty the pile is there. Guilty that there's laundry on their bed. And that's why allowing them to not feel guilty and instead flip that conversation they're having to with, I am doing a good job, not I'm always behind, I'm always drowning, is huge. And if you can see that on them and you're consistent, because everything, everything has to be consistent, if you're consistent with it, you will get there and unlock that in somebody. But it takes you holding that fort down for as long as you can until they jump on and say, wow, I, I see something now. I'm glad you saw it in me first. Um, so that's both sides. And you know what? If you're a family member of an account manager, do your part at home, guys. Come on, kids. Do your part. Water the flowers, make dinner. Even if you're chopping up the vegetables, it's a huge deal. Clean those rooms. Fold those socks and do your thing. And maybe have a glass of wine waiting for mom when she comes home so she could sit down while you guys finish dinner. That would go a long way to having a happy wife, happy life scenario at home. So I hope you've enjoyed this. We appreciate you guys. If you have any questions on working with us, please let us know. Again, our agency assessment and retention program combo are by far our number one biggest opportunities. And we'd love to work with you guys on that. Three different ways. Remember, we've got live, virtual via Zoom, and then our online school, which is all DIY. So if you're interested, let us know. Love to talk to you. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.